I don't want to say I like seeing things burn or I like seeing people's houses burn. But I'm a fireman. My job is to put out fires. I want to be where the fires are to be put out. You're not supposed to say it, but what I like most about being a firefighter is, you know, the risk and the adrenaline with it. That'll never pass any kind of psych board if you take it, but here, it seems to work. about Highland Park, Michigan, 27% unemployment, more than 40%, 40% of the population is living below the poverty line. We've got stats about police uh, and fire being cut. Uh, we've got stats about public safety not being invested in. Could gangs be responsible for the recent rash of intentionally set fires in Highland Park? According to investigators and Homeland Security, the answer is yes. And if you have any information on who could be responsible for these arsons, please call Highland Park Police or the Fire Department because it could only be a matter of time before someone is hurt or killed. You know, they say we get fire bugs now and then where you get a bunch of fires, like a rash of fires for a couple days, and then it'll go away. Somebody's probably, it's probably one person doing it, you know? But I'm not an expert, so I really don't know. This is my theory. I don't know why people let a lot of houses on fire around here, honestly. But I know if I lived in the city, my investment was in my home, and there was a house filled with diaper shit next door. When I had a chance, I'd burn it to the ground. Highland Park is, I believe it's, don't quote me on the, the number, the square miles, it's like 2.8 square miles, something like that, it's small. We're completely landlocked by Detroit. So all our borders all the way around is the city of Detroit. I mean, there's a lot of history here. This was, under, from my understanding, was one of the richest places in the country at one time. Obviously Highland Park, back in its heyday, when Ford Motor Company over at Manchester and Woodward, you know, Ford had to pay our workers $5, wages and um, everybody came to Highland Park, everybody wanted to work, everybody wanted, you know, you had uh, big people from Ford living in Highland Park, you had CEOs, people on top, you know, but unfortunately uh, riots and just the bad stuff came in, you know, and then obviously people scatter, when people scatter vacant homes, the drugs, the violence, it's just an on ongoing battle. Uh, the fire department in Highland Park is a lot different, set up than most fire departments because we run with way fewer people than anybody else. Uh, Detroit, for instance, they drop 21 people on average on a house fire, and we drop six to seven on a house fire. Yeah, our, our department used to have 80 members, and we're down to 28. I, I think our chief said something a little while ago, it was like 80, 85 percent arson. Most of the, my friends that are firemen in the suburbs, they go to a kitchen fire and it's a small fire. They get there and put it out. The person's house is fine. We pull up to a holy, full, fully involved house with two other houses on fire. And we gotta put it all out somehow, try to save these houses, try to save the houses next door to those houses. We do a lot of things kind of old schoolish because we, that's what we have is old school crap, junk equipment. The old station was so old, they tried fixing things and the city just didn't have money to put big repairs onto it. The roof was leaking really bad and it ended up getting condemned. So they scrambled around trying to fi find a place to put them and this is what they ended up with. And it was supposed to be temporary, that was eight years ago. Um, my first three months here I slept in a tent. I mean, Another guy that got the job together, we put tents up back there and just put little you know, mattresses on the floor and slept in there until we knew that we were going to stay here because we didn't know if they were going to keep us, you know, because we didn't know if we were going to make it. When I came back from my first deployment in 2006 from Iraq, uh, I showed up and the guys were back in this warehouse. I actually had to ask one of the cops in the area where it was. I saw the guys had little cubicle walls set up throughout this 40,000 square feet, not giving any of the guys much privacy. 
I just come from an area where they had very minimal structures there. I decided I want some privacy of my own, so I built a little uh, eight by 12 room. Guys started asking me to build them rooms. After that, a couple guys wanted bigger rooms, so they started adding on, doing their own thing on the uh, outskirts of it. We need somewhere to stay warm in the winter. It gets so cold in here. You can see your breath. The only place there's heat is usually up in the front where the trucks are to keep them warm. But other than that, if you're back here, you gotta have your heater on in your room. And same thing in the summer, it gets hot in here. A lot of our houses don't get knocked down, so we'll drive through the city sometimes and you'll, you'll pass one and be like, that was a good stop. Remember that one? Remember what happened there? Tell the story, everybody talks about it. Yeah, remember this happened? The roof fell in on us or this happened or, you know. We see some of the craziest fires here. You tell people stories and they're like, no way, that didn't happen. And you're like, yeah, it did. You don't get an opportunity to go into a fire unless you're a fireman. This is the uh, fire cam 1080. Uh, it attaches to the brim of my helmet. I can withstand heat from 900 degrees to 2,000 degrees, so I can take it into fires with me. So I started filming them and like putting them up on YouTube, and and uh, it, mostly just my friends and like some of my family would watch them. My mom refused to watch it for a while. She was like, "I don't like that crap." I missed a lot of good fires for a couple months, seemed like, and we finally got a real good one. I did not think anybody would see that video. I thought it would be just the guys here, some of my friends, other people that have watched my videos, and that would be it. And I put it on YouTube, and it got like so many hits. I never thought it would get put on the websites that it got put on, and then it was on the news. It was kind of crazy. Favorite stories of the day. How about that? It comes from a young firefighter who wore a camera on his helmet for an entire year. You get, I get a lot of, uh, is that thing on? <laughs> Don't talk about it, because that, that Ziggler's got his camera on. I gave Scott a lot of shit initially for putting on the helmet camera, and I was actually gonna tear it off his helmet and throw it into the fire. Sometimes we don't like people to see some of the stupid stuff we do. Oh my God, it's a big dog. <laughs> When I made the, the video that got like a million hits or whatever, so many people are watching it, but got a lot of negative activity from comments from people in the fire service. If you read through some of the comments on my video, amazing. Some of the people just say the most ridiculous things. They don't realize what we're dealing with here. There's one, is, is literally, it was a car fire, it was a video of a car fire. I mean, we just ran up, took our hose line, I popped the, the hood of the car. Within a matter of five seconds, the fire is out. And these people are like, because we didn't have our masks on, we didn't have this, we didn't have, we didn't go buy the book, which I understand there's things that can happen and I don't know, just different style of firefighting here. It's like, a, I feel like it's like an older, Old school, you get that here in, in, in Detroit too a lot. You do, it, you do it so much. So when you're doing it today and then you got another one tomorrow or you go a week without one maybe, and then you get three or four house fires, it's more of a second nature so you, you know, it's just different. Why is there only three of you? Because we don't have any help. Well, why aren't you calling mutual aid? Well, because mutual aid around here is scarce. Detroit is busy all the time. I mean, if they're getting their butts kicked, they're usually, we're burning here too. Some days you just run from fire to fire to fire. You end up on equipment, like our old ladder truck, which wouldn't pass a test in any other area to be used. And you're going up on this thing, you don't know if it's gonna come down. You run out of air bottles. You end up having to go down smoked hallways. 
without a tank on. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how. <laughs> it's, it's not safe. It's not gonna. Maybe maybe that fire took a year off my life. I don't know. We get a lot of grief with the internet stuff going to this risk versus reward thing. You know, why would you put out a vacant house? But what they're not thinking about is that just because someone's not paying their taxes doesn't make it vacant. I think that we've found more people living in vacant houses than we have in houses that are supposed to be occupied. So just because someone doesn't pay taxes doesn't mean you're not supposed to go get them out. You know, our job isn't to decide financially where anybody's at. We kicked in the door on a house one time, sheet of plywood over it with a padlock on it. We blew the padlock off, went off. There's five kids laying there with who I assume was their father. The whole upstairs was on fire, and this is by all definition a vacant house. We don't, we don't listen to vacant or occupied because it's none of our business. Fire, we go put it out. There's no money. You just do what you gotta do. Just kinda improvise with, with what you got, kind of thing. I don't know, why, why, does that ha why is that happening in an American city? Why are people just kinda being pressed aside? I feel like people say, oh, it's Detroit, so. And then you get people say, well, just let the whole city burn down. Let the houses burn. That's not the answer. You can't just let things burn down. When they started calling up here and, and asking about it, I was hesitant. I was like, you know, I don't want to. I don't want it to seem like I didn't want anybody to think, you know, oh, you're you're trying to like a glory hound for your fire department. It's not that at all. I want people to know how hard we work and how hard firemen work. I just want everybody to know this is what we're doing. Think about it when you go to vote to pay an extra fifty cents a year or a day. It's not going to affect your life very much, but if you go against it, if the politicians go against it, it might affect someone else's. It might affect yours. Your house might burn down because you didn't have an adequate response. A fireman might get killed, God forbid, because they didn't have enough manpower on scene or they didn't have the proper tools to, to fight their fire. Nobody here works here for the money. We all work here because we love doing the job.